Half-Life 2 and its episodes are filled with easter eggs and secrets. If you're an avid watcher of Half-Life 2 videos on YouTube, you probably already know most of these. Let me know if you see anything new here though. Also, please let me know other easter eggs you would want to see in another part of the series. The first one being the hidden skulls in the root canal and water hazard chapters. This one is probably the most literal easter egg since it's quite like searching for eggs on easter. Just with skulls. While playing through the root canal and water hazard chapters, you have perhaps found one of these skulls laying around. What you may not know is that there are actually a ton of these hidden throughout the two chapters. If you want to try to find all of them for yourself, go to the timestamp that's on screen right now. There are a total of 14 ones if you do plan on finding them. The very first one is not that much of a hidden one, it serves the purpose of teaching the players about the danger of barnacles, but I mentioned nonetheless. The second one is behind this grate right at the beginning of the canals. The third one is right here, hidden behind some props. The fourth one is under this grate at the underwater barrel ramp puzzle. One is in this secret tunnel, which is actually half an easter egg in and of itself. The sixth one being right across from it. The seventh one is below this ramp shortly afterwards. There is one barely visible in this exploded tanker, which is still also the same map. The ninth one is on top of this sign. The tenth one is sitting right at the bottom of this pillar of the bridge. The eleventh one is in this crate along with some ammo by a sunken ship. The 12th one is right here, which is incredibly easy to miss. The 13th one is basically unseeable unless you try really hard, hidden on top of this big trash dumpster. The final one is in a sunken container at the helicopter boss fight. These don't seem to have any meaning. Some people theorize that it may be places where playtesters died, which I think is highly unlikely. Not only that playtesters are sure to have died many, many more times than these 13 locations, but also that some of these spots include next to no way of dying. What do you think these guys mean? Let me know in the comments. The next easter egg you are very unlikely to have seen in your playthrough, unless you were cheating. In the mines of episode 2, during the part where you are being chased by the Antlion Guard, you ride past this inaccessible cave path, which only the Antlion Guard can pass through. If you were to no clip into this cave, you will see the floating message, how did you get back here? You probably already know most G-Man sightings that happen throughout the game. This one you are likely to have missed or just not heard about though. The sighting takes place in episode 2, near the ending of the game after watching Judith's transmission. Right before Alex relays the message that G-Man gave her to Eli, you are able to take a glimpse at G-Man's silhouette in the monitor. The next one takes place in Kleiner's lab. You probably already know of the small teleporter here. You can use it to teleport small props. Did you know, however, that you are actually able to break it? After teleporting objects a total of 10 times, it will break, and sometimes cause the NPC that's currently speaking to remark about it. What? Oh dear, you're right. What? I almost forgot. The whole remarking thing I'm only sure about due to the map file, because I couldn't actually get it to trigger in game, except for Bunny saying whoops once. So if you actually have any footage of this, please let me know. The next easter egg you're only able to know if you've taken a look at the map files, or I've seen it in the video. At the end of Sand Traps, where you and your Antlion army storm Nova Prospect, you have to fight against two gunships. The name of these two gunships are for one Pen, and the other one's called Teller, which is a reference to Pen and Teller, the popular magician duo you have most likely seen or heard of before. For easter egg number 6, we have probably the hardest to reach ammo in all of the Half-Life games. While driving through the canal, you might have taken a quick detour into this small rebel hideout. You'll be able to find some resources here like ammo and health. You might not know, however, that you're actually able to climb up this wall. If you were to stack some crates and barrels here, you can climb all the way up here and find some 357 ammo and a uh, boot. Which is pretty weird considering there's no indication that you can actually go up here. The next easter egg involves this prop in Eli's lab. Eli will remark about it if you interact with it, telling you how Alex brings in the strangest things. The little round ball inside of it is actually the head of a cut enemy, the cremator. The cremator would be seen roaming around the streets of City 17, burning bodies that lay around. There was also a planned fight against one at one point, its head in its jar being the only evidence of it still existing in the Half-Life universe. Well, I say that, but there are also a ton of burnt bodies in the canals, which are probably a reference to its existence as well. The next easter egg can be found on a lot of cars, this model specifically. The easter egg actually being its license plate. Googling these numbers will show you that it's actually a zip code for a place called... Freeman. For easter egg number 9, we will have to go to the intro of episode 1 and take a closer look at the orange van, the one that Dog throws into the citadel right at the start of the game. There's a small little easter egg hidden inside the texture. If you take a close look at the steering wheel, you will see what seems to be the logo of Radiohead. The next easter egg is a more known one, since it's even got an achievement tied to it, which is a singing Vortigaunt. After you fight the Hunter Chopper, you will see these two grates, one of them being slightly open. This might just look like a decorative addition to the level. However, by parking your airboat right here and climbing on it, you are able to get inside of it. What follows is a lot of radioactive sludge. You will lose quite a bunch of health going through it. You will find a hole in the canal to your left, which is where you will find the singing Vortigaunt. He's just sitting here in a cave, eating headcrabs and singing a bit. By interacting with him, he will actually speak many cryptic statements pertaining to the Black Mesa incident, Zen, the G-Man and the Nihiland. We bear witness to the bright eternity of the Nihiland's demise. You leap, you fall, we see you flash between the barriers. 
Also, another interesting fact, this is the second time you see fast headcrabs in this game, the first time being in Station 6. If you were to go back after taking the airboat, you will find the person that gave you the airboat, Arlene, killed by a fast headcrab. While we're already at classic easter eggs, I'm gonna hit you with probably one of the most well-known easter eggs in all of gaming, the zombie sounds. You may have noticed how zombies often sound like they're saying things, but probably are something to be complete gibberish. <laughs> this is what you hear when you reverse these sounds. In addition, in Ravenhorn you get a lot of opportunities to set zombies on fire, to which they let out a painful scream, which is already bad enough the way it is. If you were to reverse these sounds, you will hear even worse things. <laughs> To which it's probably worth to mention that the person on the headcrab is most likely still alive to some extent. The headcrab controls them, but since body shots are also enough to kill a zombie and the headcrab survives this, some of the vitality still come from the human. Which really isn't a fun thing to think about when you ram a saw blade through six zombies at once next time. The hospital in episode 1 also hides a cool easter egg. Every patient's room has two names of the patients that were in this room, presumably before the 7 hour war. What you may not know is that the names of these signs are actually names of developers. I'm not gonna go through all of them, because there are quite a lot of signs, but you will see the last name of people like Mark Laidlaw, Eric Wolper, or Kelly Bailey for example. The next easter egg is found in the silo of episode 2. While talking to Uriah, you are able to see a monitor when peeking behind this tanker. If you no clip to this room, you will find that there's a sequence of numbers on this monitor. These numbers are actually a reference of the series Lost, where these exact numbers are entered into a computer in a pretty crucial scene. Type in exactly what I tell you, understand exactly, nothing else. 4 8 15 16 23, 42, press execute. There is also this logo of White Forest, which isn't seen anywhere else in the silo. This looks exactly like the logo in Lost. Seems like the developers were quite a fan of this show. The next easter egg can be found on Eli's scrapyard, right when you first received the gravity gun. You would probably have pulled down the barrels from up here using the gravity gun when you first got it. Did you know, however, that you can actually climb up there? But you will find up here is the cover for a charging station of Half-Life 1, the suit charging station to be exact. For the final easter egg, we have to go to the playground at the start of Half-Life 2. You will find a swing, a carousel, and this tic-tac-toe kind of game, which is missing a piece. What you may not know is that this piece can be found later on when entering the apartments. It's just laying here on the table in the first apartment you enter. You can actually bring it back, which sadly does nothing. While we're here in the apartment, I'm gonna mention something that isn't necessarily an easter egg, but still interesting nonetheless. These apartments that get raided here are actually fully textured and have an actual view outside. Which is really weird for FF2 as basically every other location throughout the entire game that you can't access is basically just invisible except for the seeable parts. So those were 15 of our favorite easter eggs of Half-Life 2 and its episodes. Let me know if you want to see another part of the series and let me know what easter eggs you want to see in them. Check out my other videos and otherwise, thank you for watching.